Hey everybody, it's that time of the week again. Time for your poem of the week, your very own. Coming to you live from Austin, Texas. Here, here, time for your fun Texas fact. Texas is the home of the Dr. Pepper. Put that in the category of people will brag about anything. Yes, you can. See, I grew up near the city of Atlanta, the birthplace of Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola's original secret ingredient, cocaine. Dr. Pepper's secret ingredient, as invented by a soda jerk in Waco, room juice. Ah, gather around. Grab a seat. Plenty of seats right up here in front. It's Easter Sunday. Unless you're Orthodox, where it's Good Friday. We are in the midst of Passover and Ramadan. Grab a seat. Come gather around me, people. And show me some love. Hit the love button and we'll come back to you in infinity. There we go. I see the love button coming up. Hey, Kathy Gould, how you doing? Long time no see. No eyeball time with you. Hey, Kat. Well, yes, it is new Dr. Pepper. It's, um, well, people will brag about anything. Don't hit the anger button because it will come back to you in infinity. It is Easter Sunday. We're going to have a great show. Thanks so much. We've got a special Orthodox, uh, special Passover edition here. Uh, I found this poem uh, from the Great Labor Arts Exchange. Uh, I remember it being read when I attended the Great Labor Arts Exchange one year, and I think it was first read there in 1981 and is attributed to a poet named Scott Scholl. And it seems appropriate uh, for this Easter, this Passover. Uh, last Easter, I remember telling the story of Aorsta and uh, the bear and the hunter and uh, of the rabbits running into the flames and finding the bird eggs and all of that. Uh, but we're going to go with Passover this time. And it seems appropriate because, uh, you know, in Ithaca, New York, Starbucks has, uh, all the Starbucks in Ithaca have unionized. And um, a few of the Amazon distributors are starting to unionize. And there's, there's, a, there's a, a, new, a new new blood in the labor movement happening. So this poem seems appropriate. It's, it's called The Greatest Walkout Ever Known. When Egypt flourished on the Nile and pyramids were all the style, a guy named Pharaoh was the king, and what a big stick he did swing. Among his very kingly tricks, the Pharaoh manufactured bricks. And every little while he'd say, cut down upon the rate of pay. Those Hebrew workers are strong and tough and don't work long or hard enough. From dawn to twilight they did sweat, for more production we must get. And his agents jumped when Pharaoh roared, because he was the chairman of the board. And he had sworn his kingly gent that dividends of 12% on common stock he would declare. Each year he was in the chair. And the brickyards went from bad to worse. One day a man said with a curse, we cannot live on at this rate. We need a walking delegate. So they elected Moses, who took up the burden of the Jew. He tried to attribute the case, but Pharaoh laughed right in his face. Go chase yourself, he said with scorn. I've made bricks here since before you were born. The way I run the yard suits me, and I'll be damned if I can see why I should listen to the kicks of some guy who just makes bricks. All right, said Moses, then we'll fight. A 
until you give us what is right. Whereas brave Moses pulled some stunts that have never been matched, not even once. He brought on plagues of flies and blood of slimy bullfrogs, strode in mud of cattle sickness, vermin and lice, which really were not very nice of darkness, locusts, boils, and hail. And when all else seemed to fail, to make the Pharaoh cry enough, he brought on something mighty tough, the fearsome curse of plaguing death, when all the firstborn lost their breath. And that made the king capitulate to Moses, walking delegate of Egypt's local number one, Brickmakers Union, they had just won the first of all the countless scraps between management and labor's chap. Then Moses cried, go pack your tools. If we remain here, we are fools. So out of Egypt's bonds they went for Canaan's milk and honey bent. And they left poor Pharaoh to bemoan the greatest walkout ever known. There you have your poem of the week. Now, make sure you hang around for your moment of spin. I seem to have lost my little guy. Not working at all today. Yeah, I was in Las, Las Vegas last week, and I think my little spinning thing got, got bent. But there we go. Your moment of spin. Thank you, Kathy. I appreciate the applause. Cat says solidarity. I am in I am in solidarity with the greatest walkout ever known. We will have your moment of spin here. Give me a number between one and three. Number between one and three. I know it takes a few minutes. So as you're as you're contemplating whether it's not what what the number between one and three will be. If you would like to contribute to me or this broadcast, you can do so at bald PayPal slash bald Chandler or Barbara J Javers says two. We'll go with two or Venmo.com slash the Chris Chandler show. Number two. Number two is this one always gets picked. I, I never put them in the same order, but we seem to like observations from a 24 hour laundromat. Give me a number between one and thirty three. For your Easter moment of spin. Hey, Barbara, you're not late. You're right on time. Number between 1 and 135. Hey, Tracy Joe. Ben Farrell says number 12. Hey, Ben, how you doing? Your moment of spin from observations from a 24-hour laundromat. This is from the title piece of the first book that Phil Rockstro and I put out together called Protection from All This Safety. Phil Rockstro is a great poet. You should look him up. All monsters should remain under the bed and not fraternize with skeletons in the closet. There you have your moment of spin. Thanks so much for, for stopping in. Uh, if you can support me, please do. There's lots of other causes out there to support. And y'all have a wonderful, happy Easter.